Compared to other trading card games, Yu-Gi-Oh! is unique in the fact that it doesn't strictly utilize a set of key terms to convey what card effects are and how they function. While terms such as piercing damage and banish exist in the game, and furthering terms such as bouncing or spinning removal have been adopted by the player base to explain different game mechanics, Yu-Gi-Oh! primarily relies on semantics and how cards are specifically worded to determine how a card effect works in application. The terms of if you can and when you can as well as the descriptors of mandatory and optional refers to effects missing timing in their activation window. The phrase, discard one card appearing before or after another phrase in a card's effect text refers to how an effect and a cost can be distinguished. All of these examples and several more fall under the wide cast umbrella of a concept called problem solving card text. PSCT is utilized throughout the game as a means to not only simplify and mitigate effect text, but also provides a means to roughly make effect text more uniform across the span of card collectives that share similar abilities. But it wasn't always like this. In fact, it used to be worse and more confusing. Problem solving card text wasn't always present in the game, and in the grand scheme of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s longevity, it's still a fairly new concept, and one that players, both old and new, can have difficulty grasping. In the dark ages of Yu-Gi-Oh!, so 2002 to 2010, card effect text was causing more problems than a toxic X. I got 99 problems. And effect text is literally every one of them. So, let's talk about problem causing <laughs> card text in Yu-Gi-Oh!, Going back to one of the earliest sets of the game, Magic Ruler introduced a mess of card text additions, with these weird blue monsters called Rituals. While the terms of Ritual Magic Card and Ritual Summon were fairly straightforward, Relinquished was very much an exception to the rule. For a long time, Relinquished was the card with by far the longest effect text in the game, with a baffling 104 words. And would you like to know the best part? I bet you would. That 104 words didn't even describe in full what the card did. Let me explain. Let's take a look at Hungry Burger, a fan favorite. This monster can only be ritual summoned with the ritual magic card Hamburger Recipe. You must also offer monsters whose total level stars equal 6 or more as a tribute from the field or your hand. The ritual magic card Hamburger Recipe states the following. This card is used to ritual summon Hungry Burger. You must also offer monsters whose total level stars equal 6 or more as a tribute from the field or your hand. Too easy! The ritual magic card designates the monster that it can ritual summon and the total levels needed to sacrifice to meet its requirement. The ritual monster specifies the ritual magic card needed for its ritual summon and reiterates the total level requirement. They left no room for confusion or misinterpretation. So what's the problem with Relinquished? They didn't include the Ritual Summon Clause in its effect text. So for quite some time, Relinquished based on its effect text did not actually have to be Ritual Summoned. That's pretty based. Now, to a point, I get that some sacrifices had to be made with how bloated the effect text of the only Ritual Monster with an actual effect would be. But for the love of all that is sacred in the world, the excess fat might want to be trimmed before we cut out a vital organ. I suppose it's irrelevant though, all things considered, because even the most recent 25th anniversary printing of Relinquished doesn't include that clause. We all just kind of know that Relinquished has to be properly ritual summoned. But on the subject of bloated card text, let's take a peek at Toon Dark Magician Girl. Let's be honest, Toons have by far the most catastrophic disarray of shared card effects of any archetype in the game. And Toon Dark Magician Girl was basically the catalyst for all of it, being the first monster in the Toon catalog that differed from the standard collection of Toons shared effect text. Premiering as a Shonen Jump magazine promo in issue 12 of volume 4, the original Lolly dropped the standard summoning sickness of Toons in favor of the original Dark Magician Girl's effect. So, I suppose anyone trying to combine their starter decks of Yugi and Pegasus was happy. Clocking in at 120 words, she very easily surpassed Relinquish as the card with the largest effect text. Which is funny to think about in hindsight, PSCT was designed to mitigate effect text. But nowadays, if your card doesn't have at minimum 120 words, it's either not a good card, or it does a whole lot of nothing. Konami knew what they were doing. I don't say that by means of praising them, I say that in full discredit of the organization. Nonetheless, Toon Dark Magician Girl would become the standard for future Toon support 
picking and choosing what limitations they'd be equipped with, but also allowed for new tunes to pick up some useful effects. You know, we could just drop all of the limitations, but what do I know? You ain't got the answer, Sway! Dark worlds are very much a usual suspect when referring to problem-causing card text. However, in most instances, they become a teaching point for how a new player can distinguish discarding for cost and discarding for effect, and how the effects of Dark World monsters properly function. Well, for the most part, because Snow and Gold thought it would be funny to differentiate themselves in the most asinine way imaginable. Snow, Unilite of Dark World has an effect of the following. If this card is discarded to the graveyard by a card effect, colon, if it was discarded from your hand to your graveyard by an opponent's card effect, comma, you can target one monster in your opponent's graveyard, comma, add one Dark World card from your deck to your hand, comma, then special summon that target, if any, in face-up defense position. So, the majority of Dark World monsters have an effect that triggers when they are discarded, specifically as an effect and not for the cost to activate a card. And some of these monsters have additional effects that trigger when discarded by the effect of an opponent's card. And it's made relatively easy to understand because the effects are separated in two different blocks in the monster's effect text. What's wrong with Snow? It completely abandons that idea. As it reads, you're granted the ability to recover one of your opponent's monsters from their graveyard and search a Dark World card, but only if Snow was discarded by an opponent's card effect. How does it actually work? <laughs> well, if Snow is discarded by either you or your opponent's card effect, you search a Dark World card. Then, if it was discarded by your opponent's card effect, you can also special summon a monster from their graveyard. And all of this unnecessary confusion could have been avoided if Konami simply kept the uniformity of Dark World effect text and fully separated those two clauses. But no, Snow and Gold will have no part of that because they're not like other girls. Our final card on the docket probably needs no introduction. Pole Position a trap card that forever lives in infamy as being a catalyst for illegal moves in Yu-Gi-Oh, causing several infinite loops and just overall being a headache for rulings. Just scrub the card from the game entirely, please. Pole position in its own wording isn't really confusing by any means. The monster with the highest attack on the field is unaffected by spell cards, and if pole position is destroyed, the monster with the highest attack on the field at that time goes with it. It's as straightforward as it gets and adapts to whatever state the playfield is in, but that's the problem. We have a prop! Let's say my opponent controls Battle Ox, and I control a face-up pole position and the field spell Rising Air Current, which increases the attack of all wind monsters by 500. So currently, Battle Ox is protected from spells by the effect of pole position. But let's say I would attempt to summon Winged Dragon Guardian of the Fortress number one. Hey, stop! Technically, I couldn't perform that specific summon because it would create an infinite loop due to the continuous adaptation of pole position. When the Winged Dragon is summoned, because it's a wind monster, Rising Air Current increases its attack by 500, bringing it to 1900, which now makes it the monster with the highest attack on the field. So Winged Dragon is now protected by pole position. But because of this protection, it now loses the 500 attack boost from Rising Air Current, bringing its attack back down to its original 1400. Meaning that Battle Ox is once again the monster with the highest attack on the field. So now the protection by pole position is granted to Battle Ox. But because Winged Dragon is now not unaffected by spell cards, it regains the 500 attack boost from Rising Air Current, so it's back to 1900 attack. So it's once again the strongest monster on the field and is now protected by pole position. This cycle of switching what monster pole position grants its protection to continues infinitely with no net change in the game due to the summon of the Winged Dragon. Let's run it back to the beginning. Compared no, to other trading card far, games... Jesus. Yeah, forward, keep going, right there. At this game state, Summoning any wind monster whose attack would be increased above Battle Ox by the effect of Rising Air Current would be considered an illegal move, as it begins the cycle of the infinite loop. And it only causes such commotion because of the effect of pole position. After all is said and done, I don't think it's misguided to say that Yu-Gi-Oh could very much be easier to understand if 1. Nonsense like this didn't exist, and 2. If the wording of card effects across the game was actually made uniform and congruent, 
you know, like what PSCT was meant to accomplish. But on the flip side of that coin, the wording doesn't really matter. I mean, we as players don't read our cards anyways. That's going to wrap up today's discussion, guys. Let me know your thoughts. Do you have any further examples of problem-causing card text in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh? I'd love to hear them down below, so drop your comments. If you liked the video, don't forget to drop a big thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated, as always, guys. And until next time, this has been Purple Pineapple TV, signing off.